Hello, we're back again. We got good information on ATA Day 2. We're from the Archery Shack. I'm Jeremy. I'm TJ. And we're here to tell you what we did today, what we saw, and that, to that sort of thing. Thank you for watching our uh, videos so far, listening to them. Yesterday's was pretty boring, I know, <laughs> but it still um, has already got more views than I thought it would, so appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. We do a weekly podcast and we talk about bow hunting and things that go on at our shop in Anderson, South Carolina. So check us out. Today we started off by backing up the septic tank. <laughs> we got us yeah. an Airbnb here and we don't know what happened, but we did. <laughs> we got two bathrooms. We did a flush on both and bubbled up in the sink <laughs> and in the shower. Uh, we got it took care of yep. then we went to the show and we shot the bows mm -hmm. so we started with the obsessions overall good feeling bow mm -hmm. um balanced well i felt like this year they really stacked the quickest i, I mean they've, they've always been more of an aggressive feel but they really stacked up hard and then the last two-thirds of the draw cycle is just kind of like butter Boop, you know it's yep. back so to me, that was different than more than normal of their feel. What do you think? About the same. You know, it stacked up a little bit more from the previous obsessions that I've had. Yeah. Um, they did change over to a five-piece five piece string set this year. I feel like they can get a little more speed and a little more let off that way because you've seen – I mean, a lot. Darton started it, but you got PSC doing it. You got uh, Matthews that's done it for a long time now. You've got a lot of people doing it. So, I overall, mean, I mean, it was a good shooting bow. I, I was, like I said, it was just something that I wasn't used to on the obsession because normally it kind of loaded up about, you know, it didn't load up as soon as you started to draw. It was, you know, about middle ways it loaded up. Yeah, but this year it kind of loaded up more on the front end. But once you got it back and everything, it was it was a good shooting bow. I really really liked it. Yeah, I mean I thought the grip felt good. Excuse me. Um, and they've got a badass looking riser. They do. I think it's one of those you love it or you hate it. Because I've had some people be like, "Man, I think it's ugly," but seen in person is pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. um, the the two bows I shot the Evolution six and seven side by side. Of course, six and seven refers to the uh, brace height or whatever. So uh, I shot the six first, and then I followed it with a seven. They had a similar feel, um, but I know they're they're like a 33-inch bow, low over 33 inches, 4.4 pounds, 90% let off. You can definitely feel that 90% let off. Um, if I was going to buy one personally, I'd for hunting, probably go with like the six. Yeah, the little the little Evolution XS is a little short booger, with a similar feel, um, and then they got like the Lawless 4T, which is pretty much similar to what was going on last year. They got the Evolution XL, which would be a good 3D bow. It's a little bit longer. Uh, on the cheaper end, they got a HB 33. So the hashtag is a great woman's bow. Yep. So give them a. It'd be worth if you were in the market for bow and you had one close. It'd be worth going to shoot and at least compare. Yeah. To um, some other people. I think what was next? Gearhead. Gearhead was next. Uh, Destructor was that the name of it? The I believe so. Disruptor. 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 So this is sort of their new thing. They've dropped their prices a little bit, and I think that's a good idea because it being so unique. You know, the Gearhead yeah. they've got little short bows. They did away with the 18 inch and even the 20 inch in. The, one of the models not the t-series but um the beast they they did also did away with the 40 inch too yeah so i'm i'm just assuming that wasn't a great seller seller um a little bit of hand vibration but it's they're cool because you can flip them left and right handed with the same bow they got like three or four different grips you can change out with the ones we've got in the shop you can actually paper tune them by moving the grip left or right on the way they've got it set up so yeah so you know pretty unique um we have a guy that we know that said it looked like you turned a 14 year old loose when the rector set <laughs> um, Still does. but as far as you know overall look yeah i think they're unique they're pretty cool 
The oh. Disruptor they got in the 2024 and 30. The T series uh, they are now selling, I think, online is what I was understanding. The B series and the Disruptor is going to be through the shop type thing is what I think I understood. But is it B series or the T series? Because T is going to be the cheaper ones. Okay. And uh, but overall, if you wanted like a super short compact blind bow it'd be worth giving it a look uh, and we're we're a dealer for them and we can get you one but uh you'd have to just give us a holler so we can see what what you need and the price and all that type of thing but it's uh it's some good stuff and then we stopped by the air venturi booth it was right beside gearhead and they had the steambow set up yeah they did and that was slick this, google it's steambow and you'll see what we're talking about but it's ultimately an excalibur style crossbow it, some of them fit on excalibur some of them they have their own bow yep but it's got a little tank and they hit a button and it automatically uh loads the limb you know it pull in other words cocks it pretty much it's like an auto cock crossbow well pretty much when you when you hit the button and it depresses the limbs and you just grab the string and grab string cock it and when you get ready to put the load you hit the button and the limbs is fully cocked ready to go it runs off of a uh a paintball gun tank yep. a little air tank said you get like five cocks off a tank and then you refill it like you would a paintball tank or i guess you could get somebody to refill it but uh anyway pretty cool little setup for an auto and for crossbow people you know a lot of the excaliburs um an excalibur crossbow if you're not familiar with them they're recurved limb style so no cams so pretty much whatever it is that's what you if it's a 175 pound pull that's what you pull in when you cock it yeah, so, yeah it can get stout so for you know people with you know a disability or you know maybe have a bum shoulder it'd be worth looking into and you know it was pretty cool i was i really liked that we had seen one um on youtube what a couple almost a year ago yeah and i was like man that's wild but and they are expensive i don't know an exact price but it was well over a thousand bucks if i remember right um it was a lot of money so anyway the uh then we shot the pse bows so the big announcement if you have been paying attention to pse you got John Dudley went to PSC, Pigman went to PSC. John Dudley has come out, they've come out with like a knock-on edition, couple bows for him. The Mach 1, they're gonna have in that, and the Evo 33, uh, they made a few uh, adjustments. I know one was he wanted a, a wider shelf on the riser to accommodate a limb-driven rest. He also wanted a hole in the little unibus thing where it connects to the five-piece string so that you could hook a limb driver cord on it without having to go all the way down to the limb. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. They're sort of a, uh, I know that PSC said that was gonna be their first sub alpine that they've done because he, I guess, shoots for, for uh, Sitka. Sitka. So my, of the whole show, most surprise bow I shot was that Mach 1. Yeah. When, when PSC first came out with a Carbon Air in 2016, I got one in the shop. I think we ended up ordering two. It, it, it was a little bit jumpy, and it had some rattle to it, just to be honest, you know. And I expected the same thing, and I shot this bow today, and it's to, to me, it is the true carbon bow. It's carbon, and it is super lightweight. We shot it with nothing on it. It had a little bit of a not vibration at all. It mm -hmm. had a little bit of a jump. But it, whether you get your sights and all on there, that's going away. Well, and we really can't say jump because it didn't, it's not like it's jumping out of no, hand. No, no, it's it not just, bad. That's just hard to describe it. But I guess you could say you could actually feel the shot. Yeah. You know, the other carbon bows, I feel like they do so much crap to them, they weigh them back down. Mm -hmm. This carbon bow is actually really light. It is. It feels good. The handle's not as blocky as it used to be. It, yep. It is the mo it's the bow that surprised me most today of all we shot every bow um it's the one that surprised me most the evo bows uh the nxt 33s the nxt 35s we shot all those they've got a new grip plastic plate thing on the side i thought it felt too wide for my liking but you can take that off and play with it and all that so i would be taking that off but as far as the feel of the bow 
thought it shot great shot the 31 thought it shot good mm-hmm. um i didn't shoot it but i looked at the bandit of course they still have the expedite and all that stuff um as usual and then we shot the uh played with the target bows a little bit of course they shot good one of the better feeling target bows i thought the uh, we got i got a video i'll probably put on something and it was that american flag on the supra it looked sharp yeah it did it had a real nice finish on that and you know normally when you get into some of those color options like it was american flag Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you know they'll be a little dull or Mm -hmm. but this joker was i mean to me it was spot on as far as colors and the brute nxt is sort of the mainline bow um this that shot pretty good looked good Mm -hmm. um trying to think they came out with that war hammer crossbow if i understood them right it was going to retail for around 1500 bucks but it's a nice little compact crossbow um 400 feet per second bow seeing a lot of crossbows we shot the ravens uh the new 29 r29 x 450 feet per second um that's a tiny little bow and it's a powerful little bow Mm -hmm. i I mean it's well thought out i mean it is well thought out It, it was um a little bit louder than what i was expecting it was but i just figure to be that little it's got to have 400 feet per second it's going to have a little and i'm not saying it was seven mag loud it was was just you know it was a little louder than what i was expecting but you know when i say loud like i said i ain't talking 30 out six seven mag 300 wind mag nothing like that oh yeah you know or even smaller two two three or yeah anything like that it just it just surprised me on that i really wasn't expecting it because i'm gonna back up i think one click we went by the cold steel booth oh yeah 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 they don't, this crossbow is not really for a hunt for a deer hunter but they got a little crossbow um the cheap shot i think it's yeah, called yeah and it, it's got like an auto not an auto cocker but under the under the grip you can ratchet cock it i guess <laughs> is the best way to put it and it has a little red dot scope on it, and they had apples set up, and that red dot, I mean, it would be the neatest little bow to go out, like, in the backyard with a couple of people and just do whatever. Now, they had video of this thing in Africa shooting big game, but they said that's not what it was designed for, and they wouldn't recommend it for well, deer hunting. Also, which we talked about this on the last podcast, they had those little broadheads that are, I don't know... If- they're technically plastic. D- technically, I don't, I don't know. Probably some high grade polymer or something, something. But uh, on in their booth, they had a, a TV up was playing video. They actually took it to Africa and yeah. shot African animals at yeah. twenty. Nothing was past twenty yards. Yeah. And they said this was strictly a. They were testing this broadhead, and they said it held up. Um, but they told us repeatedly that they do not recommend you know going after large game with this you know they're mainly marketing this towards small game squirrels rabbits you know stuff like that which i think would be pretty fun with that little cheap shot bow to oh yeah that i mean i almost want one we could like just to go out back and do whatever i mean you know have a target set up and kind mm-hmm. of kind of play around um because you really you don't you're not actually really you know pulling the string and cocking it like you say it's got that little auto cocker on there mm-hmm. and it was like i said for to have something to tinker with that you know you just want to go out and you know just kind of kill some squirrels or something with yep it was uh I think it'd be pretty fun. Probably lose a lot of bolts, though, shooting squirrels. Yeah, that is no joke. We went to Hoyt. Um, Hoyt always does good. I mean, just in my opinion, they um, we pretty much shot the whole gamut of stuff. The I'm going to start with my list here. The Carbon RX-4, we'd already shot one of those. Mm-hmm. Carbon bow, dead in the hand. Um 3.9 pounds, a little heavier than my liking for a carbon bow, but it's still under four pounds. I mean, it's, it's a great shooting bow. I didn't feel any shock. It felt, the draw cycle felt good. It loaded up just kind of like I would expect. It's not on the very front, not on the very back. It dropped over good. Um, I shot the new, we shot the new aluminum riser. I can't remember what, 
Axius. The I wrote it down here. Axius. Um, I really like that bow. I mean, it shot real good. Didn't you know? Like the carbon bow, it didn't load up in the front. Didn't load up in the back. Pretty much a a regular, you know, just pretty much a Hoyt. But it was it shot really good. I, I really couldn't, as far as the shock and feel of the bow. They were very, 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 very similar between mm -hmm. the carbon and the aluminum. I mean, not much, not much difference at all. So, I mean, Hoyt does good stuff. We got over some of their target stuff, and Vic does and all that. I mean, that, you, they've all, they've always been like great target bows, and I'm sure they always will be. I um, shot the Invecta 40, and they have two different cams. As they call it, they have a hard cam and a soft cam. I can't remember which one. Um, I think uh, it was a group. I was on one side of the booth, and I asked, where's the Invecta? I want to shoot it. Well, it was on the other end of the booth, so I walked over there with our guy, and somebody had the hard cam, so I didn't get to shoot the hard cam. I did shoot the soft cam, and, I mean, as far as draw, it held good. So, you know, it's a it's a real good shooting uh, target bow. Mm -hmm. The um, I did tinker with the Axius Ultra and the RX4 Ultra. They to me did load up just a hair quicker than the regular, but they're a, they're geared toward a speed bow. You know what I mean, like a six and a quarter inch brace height. Mm -hmm. But definitely not a bad feeling bow. Um, let me see if I got their speed. The Carbon RX4 Turbo is like a three fifty IBO, so it's a speedier um type of bow so that thing pretty pretty fancy before we go any further you know these are just our opinions oh yeah um so if you disagree with us it's, it's fine um i know everybody has their brand they shoot i'm not a brand specific guy i've had every bow Me too. that we shot yeah at one point in time and so these are just our opinions as far as you know there really wasn't a bad shooting bow that we shot today honestly no there wasn't <clears throat> you know i remember back in you know even up until about 10 years ago you would kind of there was a fight there was a line you know what i mean yeah. it's like these bows are good these bows are junk there's not that line is pretty fine now I, I, let me back up i know a bow we skipped over the win-win, win-win yeah. something out of, I don't know if it's Japan, China, wherever they're out of, they they make great recurve stuff, but they we shot them last year too. They brought a compound bow and it was it was a rattle trap. <laughs> um, that yeah. that was the only bow I shot and was like, mm, I'll pass. But it's one of those overseas deals, and they're talking about you got to import and pay all these tariffs, and I mean, why, I don't even know why. I don't know. Well, and you know, they're geared more towards the recurve stuff. Yeah, and they're so, good with that. But um, compounds, I'm not sure about. I, I, you know, I like I said, it to each their own. Um, if I had to rate it, I mean, if I had like a top five or something like that, it, it probably wouldn't make top five. Yeah. It just wouldn't. I mean, but I'm not saying that it's a boat anchor or you might as well not even go shoot it i don't know of any dealers in the states i don't know and that's i had talked to them before and they were kind of saying that they were like listen we're just trying to get our bows in the united states you know they were talking about all this stuff but anyway the hoyt stuff impressed with it as usual good stuff something to definitely um check out beside hoyt was martin martin had some new stuff out i think they're they're pushing the envelope a little bit um, and, and moving forward, the ADX-6 and the ADX-7. So the 6, 6-inch brace height, 31 and a half inches long, 4.55 pounds, 348 feet per second. Looks good. I mean, the fit and finish didn't look bad. The ADX-7 is a 28-inch bow, 7-inch brace height, rated at 338. And I think for a hunting bow, that wouldn't be a bad option. No. Um, they came out with some Target stuff, and a lot of people were talking about the Target stuff. 
I didn't get to really handle it. Um, it was, Their booth was packed today. Yeah, it was so. it was good to see that. Um, but I think Martin's definitely moving forward, and that's a that's a good thing. So yeah, I noticed. Uh, I was talking to somebody, and they said, as far as the, I guess you'd call it the limb rocker. You can flip the limb rocker on that thing and change. It can be like a seventy pound bow, and you flip it. And it'll be at like a 50 pound bow or 55 or whatever. And I don't know all the specs, but he was saying something about that. And I was like, that's actually a good, was, that's thinking out of the box. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like they High had Country a, did the other year with their, um, you could actually change it from what, like a, what was a 32 inch axle to axle to a 34 mm -hmm. by changing that limb pocket, just yep. moving it up. So yeah, I'm I'm glad to see Martin's getting. Oh yeah, they had the NX 3D, and I think we looked at it. The NXT stuff. Um, I know the NXT was getting a lot of press while we were there today. Yesterday the media wasn't allowed in. Yeah. Even though we still seen a few cameras. Um, today it was. So there's a lot of booths where they kind of, I don't want to say block people, but they were doing little interviews and stuff like that. So we didn't want to get in the way, but. Yeah. The NXT was getting a lot of press, and I think it comes in several different links. So maybe a good year for Martin. Go Ex check them out. Yeah, Expedition was beside Martin. We had already heard about the, the Expeditions, but not got to see them. Good, sharp-looking bow. I know a buddy of mine's already got one, and he was already telling me that, you know, they're pretty dang legit. But uh, got to finally scope them out. Expedition, to me... Somewhere around three years, maybe two, have went from kind of back burner to getting toward the front burner because now people know about them and people have them in their hands. They have the MX-15, MX-16. Um, that 15, I think, is showing an IBO of 362. So that's smoking fast, 32 and three quarters inch axle to axle. Um, you know, they got, they got some good stuff. They got the DLX and Escape, which I didn't get to really look at. I just mainly looked at the MX-15 and 16, but the riser, um, you know, the guy that designs the Obsession Cams designs stuff for Expedition as well, so they kind of have a similar look, but not really, you know, because most of the time the Expedition stuff is more of a hybrid system, mm -hmm. and the uh, the Obsession has always been a binary type of deal, but they, they're switching, you know, I mean, it's all the time switching stuff up like this year. These two bows are speedier and, and different, so obsession something to probably check out yep the only th it's one of those though there's not a ton of dealers you know so yeah you got to kind of find one from there i think we went to bowtech sure yep went to bowtech um i was it one of the favorite bows i had was the uh some of the bowtech stuff mm -hmm. they um first of all in their target stuff They've got risers and the, the limbs match, but I know that don't sound like a big deal, but as far as like a solid color, they had a bright yellow bow, the uh, Reckoning. Reckoning 38, and it was, I mean, bright yellow, and the limbs were bright yellow, and I was like, this, I mean, it's just out of the box, you know what I mean? They had a bunch of bows with uh, white limbs and just stuff you don't normally see, and I know even Matthews is getting into some of that stuff. But um, real eye-catching, I shot that Reckoning 38, and it shot really well. I mean, it just, you know, what more can you say? It it didn't load up at the front. It didn't load up in the back. It was, you know, just about where I like them to. Mm -hmm. Had a good rollover, good back wall. It was, it was sharp. And then the, I'm hoping I'm going to get this one right, the Revolt. Yeah, and the Revolt, the Revolt, Revolt X. They I shot um, both of them. And I was impressed. Oh man, I, I was, was impressed. We don't we don't carry Bowtech, but uh, it was a good shooting bow. It's something to look into, probably. Yeah. And they've got the whole. There's just all kind of technology in that bow, you know. Yeah. Well, the, uh, you can adjust the limb pockets. You can adjust. You can actually adjust the cam. If if I remember right, them talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, yeah. It, the the Revolt's a thirty inch bow. Seven and a quarter brace height at 335. And it, we've seen this trend, but bows kind of across the board seem to be slowing down a smidgen, but feeling a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I agree that that may be a good thing. They're more tunable, they're more shootable, and uh, 
The Revolt X is a 33 inch bow, six and a half inch brace height at 340. Both of them uh, I'm, are shooters. I mean, and you know, if it comes down to it, I may have to get a boat, that bow tech, that Revolt. Mm -hmm. it, it really shot good. I mean, Oops, you can, I mean, We'll probably go over what was our favorite bows and everything, but I mean that bow is way up on the list in my in personally my oh, I opinion. I agree, I agree. Um, it'd be hard to hard to argue that, and they still got some good stuff from last year in the lineup. You know, um, the, the dang just the the SR six, yep. um, SR the SS model. Yeah, that those are still good shooting bows mm -hmm. that I wouldn't overlook. You know, if you're in the market. But um, like I say, we're not even a Bowtech dealer, but that impressed me pretty good. The um, We went to Athens after that. They redesigned their Summit bows, Summit 6 and Summit 7. Did a few things. Actually, they redesigned a bunch of stuff. But um, to me in the past, some of the Athens bows were a little on the heavy side. I don't know if they're, they just didn't machine out enough stuff in the design or what, but the one today, the new Summit, didn't really feel that bad. No, it didn't. It was a little top heavy, but overall the shot wasn't bad. And mm -hmm. they're another up and coming company. They don't even come to the show every year. I hadn't seen them in about two years, maybe, maybe longer than that. And they announced they were coming this year, and uh, I'm glad they did. I mean, I like to be able to test out stuff, and they were there nice and super nice people i shot the uh ridge 32 ridge 34 and the ascent um they all shot good the ascent i i like that one probably the best um but not a bad shooting bow at all i mean i wish they'd come to the show every year yeah and they're another one and it's hard to kind of find dealers um but I've seen there's a lot of them floating around the the internet. But uh, and we've had several come in the shop this year, so that's a change. I don't know if they got them offline or where, but there was there were several that came in. And we tuned them and worked on them and did this that, and the other. And I thought they were good bows. Like I say, a couple of them are a little heavy, but went beside them to prime. And uh, I still feel like that 33 inch prime. Last year it was a CT3. Now that they've changed it to the Black Series with adjustable cams, that 33, I don't know, there's just something about that bow. The 35 has got a little more something, jump, not jump, vibration, something the word. Uh, the 3 is, to me, perfect. The 1 would be perfect if you were needing a super short bow to hunt with. But me, I'm, I'm just in love with that 3 for a hunting bow. Um, and I like the 5 out of... I like the five over the three. I don't know if it's just because I'm a little bit taller or what. And I've, I've been shooting the five, and granted, when I put my stuff on it, that little bit of something that I feel is out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm just, we're talking bare bow. I don't think we shot any bow with a stuff on it except the elite tournament bows did have a long stabilizer on it. But I'm glad they did because that lets you feel, Yeah. you know what I mean? Like it just it lets you feel the real deal. But, you know, prime, good stuff. Absolutely. Um, um, not, you know, it's, and I think we skipped one. Did we talk about Matthews? Oh, okay, we skipped Matthews. The um, VXR is the big thing out with Matthews, of course. The uh, 28 and 31 and a half, as usual. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that hate Matthews, but they always put out a decent shooting bow, and they have for years and years and years. So we shot them. I, w I thought it was a good shooting bow. They've got those switch weight modules and all to where you can switch weights around with just the module without switching limbs. And I think that's probably a smart idea. At first, last year, I was kind of like, I don't know. But it looks like that's something to contend with. Mm -hmm. I personally like the 31 and a half VXR. Yeah, um, that'd be the one I would shoot if I was getting one. To me, it just it didn't feel like I was shooting a thirty-one and a half inch axle to axle bow. It felt like I was shooting a thirty-three inch axle to axle yeah. bow. And I think it's because it's got those huge cams on it. <coughs> and I think they've got something there. And the twenty-eight, it was by any means, it was not. I mean, it was it shot good too. Oh, yeah. I just like that. I had a twenty-eight inch axle to axle bow this past year. 
and with the string angle for me being a little bit taller it created a problem and none of these bows have a peep side in them mm -hmm. so you know i can't justify the peep you know what the pink by peep angle would be but the 31 and a half just seemed to kind of fit me more um but the 28 is a shooter just like the 31 and a, 31 and a half um there were so many people i didn't get to shoot the tournament bow uh i'm drawing a blank on the name of it right now it was the new 36 and 40 trx okay. bows i shot have shot one of them and uh, i shot the 40 i mean it's a good shooting bow you can do a lot of stuff with it you can make it you know even the vxrs you can kind of play with the let offs and this that and the other and that you put on like 85 percent and that joker she dumps over and holds there. Mm -hmm. Matthew's always a good, always good with them. Um, I was going to go, I think we went to APA. Yeah. You know, they're out of Canada, so a lot of people don't talk about them. As far as a, a hunter's bow, that joker, you know, it's got a, on the top of the riser, if you've never seen one, you should look it up. It's got a, a hook on the top of the riser built in, and that's to hang on like a limb or a hanger or whatever. It's got a freaking broadhead wrench and sharpener built in the riser. I mean, this this is well thought out stuff, and it's, it, it looks a little different, <laughs> but uh, pretty fast bows. I shot the King Cobra. A little bit of a jump to it, but it had a good. Felt like it had decent let off, and you know, overall decent shooting bow. Just mm -hmm. a little bit of vibration, but again, nothing was on it. Um, another thing is, is they showed us it actually has a. It was a pin. This is I, cool. You listen to this. This is cool. I thought it was an Allen wrench when he took it out, but it is mounted in the riser. You take, and it's got a little, and you unscrew it, and you pull this pin out. And yep. so this is, and the guy showed us, you take kind of like you would a recurve and put your foot on the string and pull it up till it there's a hole in the bottom cam, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And it may be in the top. He just showed us on the bottom cam. But you can take and pull it up a little bit, slide this pin in that slot on that cam, and you could actually take your strings and cables off of that bow if some if you were in the field and something happened, or even if you were tuning. You don't you don't need a bow press for this bow. Yeah. And I thought that was a very innovative idea, especially you know for people that hunt out west. They pack in. Oh yeah. Something happens. Well. Yeah. You just pull out your backup and roll and that's that's where you could like go ahead and have a backup string with a peep tied in um to the right height and a loop pretty much put it on the bow because it's that easy to do yeah um set it up identical take it off put it in a little ziplock and then if something happened you could change it right then and there and then all they did to actually you know once you got everything put back on you stuck your foot on the string pulled it up pressure, yep. pulled that pin out and it was ready to go. You slide that you slide that pin in, tighten her down, and you're ready to go. So I really like that idea. Uh, walk past the Oneida stuff. It looks like the Osprey and the Phoenix are still their main two things. The Phoenix is the one I handled. I think it retails for a little over twelve hundred bucks. If you're a bow fisherman, you already know. You know, their Oneida is kind of the the way to go. They said they are. You know, got a few people, or not more, more than a few, but. People like to hunt with them. Uh, he said, what he told me was he's got people that are, you know, shooting recurves and getting older that wanted a little let off, and that's kind of their gear and trying to gear toward them. But Oneida's Oneida. You know what I mean? A lot of let off, good feeling type of bow, just you don't see many of them, but they're no. still still around. After that, we went to Darton. Darton uh, did not change anything. They tweaked some stuff on their cams. Yeah, they're calling it equalizer cam, and they got a new little cable system thing. But uh, we shot them. Uh, Darton's been around forever. Darton's got a lot of patents that people don't even realize, like these five-piece systems, Dart the CPS systems, what Darton originally called it. A lot of people are using it. Um, so Rex is a smart dude. But uh, had a little bit of vibration in, in some of their bows. But overall, a good, you know, a good bow. They still got the same sort of lineup with the Tempest stuff. They got a couple different Tempest models, the Spectra E, 
the demon, the lightning XT, all that. We fired off most of them. And across the board, I felt like they were similar. Of course, they're not all the same, different lengths and stuff. But I just felt that little bit of riser vibration. But again, no stabilizer. So Darton's a great company. Good people to talk to. Mm -hmm. Rex is a freaking genius as far as I'm concerned, designer. So, And they did go, and I think with the they went to a rotating mod also. Yeah. So... You know, if you had to change the draw length, you know, it was pretty much loosen two screws, slide it, tighten them back up. Move I, heard, yeah, I, heard him, I heard him mention it, but I didn't really look at, at the whole how you change it on that model. Um, went down to bear, uh, and luckily we've already got to handle some of the bears because we already got them in the shop. But, you know, they've, they've got, they're sort of like PSC. They got anything from a $300 bow to a $900 and something dollar bow, but... In the Legend series, you got the Status Echo, which is a 33-inch bow with a 90% let-off cam this time around. Uh, and then you got the Divergent, which is now a 30-inch bow with a 90% let-off cam. I think that's the way people are going. Well, I know on they call that new cam the Echo Cam. Um, it's adjustable from 75% to 90% let-off, mm -hmm. and it's still got a rotate mod in there for your draw length, so super adjustable i mean like you say we all we've had them in the shop and we've shot them and and we still shot them here at the show and oh yeah well we just wanted to compare because like in our brain we just shot all these other bows so you even want to shoot you know even though we got prime and bear and some psc and stuff we still want to shoot them beside the other ones because like you can't just be like well i think that prime bow had a little more shock or less shock or whatever so um, but those two, I think, are going to be big, and they already have been for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then in a little bit cheaper models, um, they got some some good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, last year, they came out with that revival for a tournament style bow. The species is going to be and has been a good bow. Uh, the paradox they offer, and the HC cam, which is like a hybrid system, a little bit faster, and they also offered in a solo cam. There's so many bows, it's hard to cover them all, but uh, definitely give Bear a look, especially if you're in that like four to $700 price range, mm -hmm. it's worth looking at some Bear stuff because overall they got something that's decent. They got some package stuff. I mean, good bows. Went down to Elite. They released the Ember at the show, yep. and it's sort of geared toward that super adjustable ladies, intermediate kid beginner not beginner i hate to say beginner but like it's just super adjustable they're, yeah. they're like thinking think of it like a mission a higher end adjustable bow i guess is the way to put it mm -hmm. um but anyway good good looking bow good shooting bow one of my favorite bows we shot today was that cure yeah to me it had about the perfect let off it has the limb stop and it held it held good. No vibration after the shot. I mean, it was one of my favorites. What the, was the target bow? The result. The result. Okay, I wanted I was, to get. I, I wanted in, to get it and the revolt back mixed up, but oh, the yeah. result. It. It's a shooter. Yeah. I mean, it is a legit. The shooter. results: thirty-seven and three quarters. Uh, axle to axle, three twenty-five IBO. The cure, the hunting bow, is thirty-one and thirteen sixteenths, three thirty-five. There, and I shouldn't call it this because people get confused, but it's, it's I call it the elite feel. When elite first came on the scene, big roundabout, well, when Levi went to them, really, they just had that limb stop, you know, and they kept having that shootability challenge stuff or whatever they called it, you know, most shootable bow, this, that, and other. And when I shot one for the first time, I was like, man, this joker holds on target good. And I think it was a combination of just the feel of the bow and that limb stop. Mm -hmm. They were, to me, they were the first that I was in the middle of or couldn't get my hands on the first limb stop bow that was readily available several years back. But anyway, they just, they hold good. I liked them. We don't carry a lead either. And like TJ said, this is just our opinion. You know, if, if we, we don't carry a lot of these bows we're saying we like, but it's just, yeah, I mean, we're not trying to step on anybody's toes anything like that you know this yeah. is our personal opinion we didn't hear of any bows blowing up today <laughs> last year a couple blew on the shooting line at the show yeah um 
I don't think I heard of any crossbows letting loose. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody dry fired one. Um, as in years past, that was caught on camera. Yep. Um, I think that that was everybody that was there. Um, somebody texted me about New Breed. You know, New Breed went consumer direct two years ago. They hadn't been to the show in two years, so I have no clue what they're doing. I don't know if they've got new bows, don't have new bows. That'd be a website type of thing. Um, Pearson went out of business. Yeah, that sucked. Um, trying to who else were we missing there's i feel like there's companies we're missing that but they wasn't at the show so well before we get off the bow shooting subject um i don't know if anybody's interested in them but the die bows oh man i forgot all about them we did shoot the die bows today they're they're being carried by 30 out six outdoors um they are from china they are from china we mentioned it before but it's like a 600 hundred dollar msrp bow that shot like a 900 or a thousand dollar bow um they had some nice colors i'm i hadn't ordered any i don't know if i will order any i got that little man in the back of my head saying it's from china don't you dare but i also got that little man on the other side saying it's 600 bucks and people would buy that all day long so i I don't know it's one of those i'll give it probably another year i think but I'd also wouldn't. I'd like to order one, put it through the paces, and just make sure it's gonna hold up. But I already have. Um, I already know people that has ordered them. Shops not around us, and they're giving them good reviews. So it was, it was different. I mean, I'm not gonna say it was a different shooting bow or anything like that. It shot good. It's just it's one of those. It's a Chinese bow. Yeah. And I'm, it's hard to, because, you know, I, I want everything, if I buy it, I want it made in America. I want yeah. it made in a good old U.S. of A. Um, unfortunately, a lot of stuff is made in China now. Um, well, and there's two sides of the story. Um, you got people that don't care where it's made. They just want the cheapest but decent and I think a lot of people fall into that category. And then you got people that want the best and highest and American made and all that stuff. So I don't know. Um, if you, I, I will say this, if you know of some, if you have a shop or you know somebody that has one, go shoot it and just, you make that decision on, on your own. Um, you know, if I was in a position where I really wanted a bow and I couldn't, physically afford a higher end bow or anything like that but it was what i wanted to do yeah then yes i would i would get one um the i'll tell you who else we hadn't mentioned that's mission from what i could tell they're most of the mission people were over helping matthews people because of course their booths are together but all i seen in their booth was the mxr and the switch so i think that's the same thing they had last year and they're kind of they do like an every two year thing sometimes yeah. so the mxr is a 30 inch bow with a seven inch brace height um and then they got the hammer and that stuff still so sort of the same thing hadn't heard anything um i might can do a little more digging tomorrow but i didn't get to talk to anybody that's the bows and i know we've been rambling on for a little bit we may stop this here and tomorrow we're going to be doing another one on the way home in the car we can talk about accessories and stuff that yeah. way we don't have a three-hour podcast <laughs> Well, tomorrow might be since yeah, we have be, a good little drive. Yeah. But uh, we appreciate y'all listening. Um, tune in again. We'll have another one. We'll do another one tomorrow. And uh, comment if you need us to look at something. We'll be at the show for about half a day tomorrow. And we got a bunch of comments today, so we'll scope it out. But again, we're from the Archer Shack. Thank you for listening. And we'll see y'all next time. See ya.